Welcome to the gavel. I am Terry Ikumi. It's less than three weeks before the National Assembly resumes plenary. The adjournment on the 14th of October was to allow for budget defense sessions, but so far it's been quite a scanty process, and even journalists have not been invited to most of the budget defense sessions, and there are questions why. Anyways, away from that, the leadership of the House of Representatives in the past week continued its interventions into some national issues. This time, the House met with aviation stakeholders to address the issue of the visa ban between Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates. Take a listen. This is an effort by the Speaker of the House of Representatives to intervene in the ongoing visa issue between Nigeria and the United Arab Emirates. The concern regarding the ban is in connection with the repatriation of trapped funds of the airlines, especially Emirates Airlines. If you want to be patriotic, but bearing in mind that there are two sides to the coin, and I'm, I'm identifying with you. Um, but at the end of the day, say they say when two elephants fight, at the end of the day, it's the grass that suffers. The grass here is being Nigerians. So what we're here to do is to find solutions. If that, this visa ban, is connected in any way, shape, or form to the issue of repatriated funds, that is the most nauseating thing I've ever heard. But then, let us try and resolve that issue. Uh, otherwise, it will be turned around to cutting your nose to spite your face. Uh, we'll, we will, in the long run, we will sit at the table with the government of Dubai and let them know that Nigeria is not a country that you can toy with. Whether it's through the aviation sector, if we don't have that strength or power, if you have one up on us on the issue of aviation in the aviation sector, by God, I know that there are ways that Nigeria somehow will have one up on them. The doctrine of reciprocity is not necessarily defined or confined to the, to the, to the, to the issue at hand. Reciprocity can be defined in very broad terms. And that is what I would want the government of Dubai, or any government for that matter, to realize. For several years, decades, we've been making a lot of kill on the Nigerian market. And now we are in a very serious crisis as a nation, economically. And it shows this time. The country has not said they're not going to pay you. The country is paying. It shows this particular time. Is this the way to pay back? I'm just asking a question. Now, no Nigerian airline has been flying in there for decades. No. And you've been doing this on your own. Now that you have some little issues to do with your funding, if, if it becomes too difficult for you to fly in, you shouldn't use diplomatic, I mean, diplomatic uh, strength, instrument, to stop indirectly the other airlines from coming in, especially the Nigerian airline. Because the moment, what you're trying to do is that if you stop operations on the 28th, I want to automatically stop their own airline from coming in. We are not kids. We don't need to be schooled to know that this is the same international aero politics we've been talking about. So I commiserate with them that uh, maybe they don't have all their funds back, but they've gained a lot from this country. <coughs> This is one of their biggest markets ever in the last 20 years. It's one of their biggest markets. Both the Minister of Aviation and the Central Bank Governor are upset by the decision of the UAE to ban Nigerian airlines from coming into the country, as well as the timing of that decision. Every country, every airline will threaten Nigeria, will not fly to Nigeria again. We're not giving Nigeria a visa. We won't do our operations. Please, countries have been shot completely and they did well. When you allow airpiece or any other Nigerian airline to fly into your country, what airpiece will do is that airpiece will charge Naira, just like we also expect foreign airlines to charge Naira. But under BASA, every penny that the foreign airline sells in tickets, it must convert into dollars and take away. 
But under Basa AIPs or any other Nigerian airline charges Naira, it does not come to go to its bank or come to central bank to say it wants dollars. So that Naira sits. The only thing that airpiece will do, maybe when he wants to pay for insurance, or he wants to buy aircraft, or he wants to maintain his aircraft. So that is why we are insisting that foreign governments where we have G2G -G agreements must respect BASA. You cannot be flying 21 landings into Nigeria, and yet a Nigerian air airline cannot fly even one into your country. Those airlines, they want to fly into your country, you intimidate them, you use dogs, sniffer dogs, to, to, to intimidate them, they cannot land. They, when they land, you do not allow them to do what is the most important set check, checks for their aircraft to be able to take off and land back again in Nigeria. You are, you are, you are, you are making life difficult for the country. What is happening is that for a country to account for 32% of the total amount blocked, it means that something is fundamentally wrong. Uh, and the issue that we have identified is the priority level that we give to aviation with regard to access to foreign exchange. The difference between us and the other countries is that they put aviation at a high priority of access to foreign exchange because they know that the aviation industry thrives only on that currency. Aviation industry does not have any other major currency than the, foreign exchange, than the United States dollar. So having understood that, they place aviation at the high level of priority to access to foreign exchange. That's why there's a difference. We are all subject to the same economic woes that we are having with the Ukrainian war, the fall of We are subject to the same difficulties, challenges. But it's where the priority that was placed. Now, presently, if we are to break it down, we have two major issues, OK? Uh, the first issue is that of the backlog. And going forward. The speaker tries to find a possible solution. There must be shifting of grounds. It cannot be my way or your way or the highway. The airline industry, Emirates, BA, and I commend BA once again for what they did after our meeting here. We must shift. One way or the other, we've heard from the girl, from 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 CBA, who seems to be holding the key from what all of you are saying. That he has done, he has done a lot, and he will still do. And I know he's ready to even move a little bit further. So we meet halfway. But no matter what, to, even if the backlog, and this is what I want you to hold on to, even if the backlog is cleared today, as we speak, we're going to run into the, prop, the same problem down the road. For as long as the, for, as, as the BASA reciprocity is not respected, because you will now continue to accumulate when, if it was respected, the, the Nigerian or the local airlines would reduce the deficit that is going to the foreign airline. The meeting ends without a resolution, but a commitment by the representative of Emirate Airlines to provide full details of the funds owed and all the related issues to the speaker. He also says no official communication on the visa ban has been received. Now, from one intervention to another, the meeting between the leadership of the House and the education stakeholders on the ASU strike continued. Speaker of the House of Representatives wants the striking lecturers to at least have some faith in the intervention of the House. On Tuesday, the leadership of the House of Representatives continued its meetings with stakeholders in the education sector. The meeting was for stakeholders to be abreast of recent development in the university system that will address the concerns of university lecturers who recently called off their eighth-month strike following a court order while also filing an appeal. The issue of the payments platform was the major point of the discussion. The main issue for discussion today, which was one of the major areas of conflict, was the issue of the payment platform whether or not um, or how to deal with the issue of UTAS as opposed to IPBIS. If you recollect, on that issue, we did agree that we would marry both. And whilst IPBIS would remain the platform, that we would, the government, 
would bring in the aspects and the areas that are specific under Utah's and specific to the universities and assimilate those areas into IPPIS. I believe that was what was agreed by both sides when we had uh, uh, last two meetings. So we want to make sure that that box is ticked and it's not just an agreement of paper or that we set it for the purposes of, of, of moving, moving um, uh, the moving towards the cancellation of the of the strike. There is really nothing complicated about it. Um, I believe as who has uh, ICT experts, so and they know that in every technology you can virtually do anything. It's just a matter of can we imagine it? Is it what you want? And I have made this commitment, and I'm repeating it, that we in our accountant general's office are going to accommodate all the legitimate peculiarities of ASU and the university community. And it's actually a no-brainer. That's just the way to go. Because again, as I said at the last meeting, the challenge is if you begin to uh, allow ASU or the university community to have their own, you're going to have the colleges of education, universities of education, polytechnics, unity schools, you name them. Everybody's going to come with their own. And Mr. Speaker, I think we just all have to agree that that is by no means the way to go. And I, I just hope that if this is the only thing that is left on the table, that we should be able to put it to rest here today. We sit down together we we'll look at all the issues that you have, all the peculiarities, we list, we list them. As we are addressing them, we are taking them. Okay? You are not going to, I'm not going to ask you to accept until you are sure that we have addressed your issues. I have, I personally, I have been on IPPS right from 2007 when it started. There is no way IPs can represent the university. It just measure TSA. Today, sir. You can talk with VCs of universities, but you need like, The greatest problem universities have today in funding is this TSA. In those days, Unilag have one of the best investments all over the world. They invest money and make profits. But no university can invest again because of the TSA. So TSA has not solved. They actually, and when we were on strike, then we did agree with the government. In an agreement, like, God, this peculiar university. Let some of you fund in university be allowed university to be invested and make profit. Is there written in our agreement? But the government didn't implement. That's what we keep on using this trust. Well, this trust, that's what we talked about. When we talk about this trust, it didn't implement it. IPs have not solved problems. It has created more problems. You can, if, you, if, you, if you want to challenge yourself, you are, you are the speaker. Check the wage bill before IPs were introduced. Check the wage bill now. The speaker and urged the ASU leadership to have faith in the intervention. All these issues are slated to be addressed, all, it's for the long-term solution. Because we don't want to come back to this. We don't want to come back to this. So it's going to be a two-day sub, uh, summit, I believe, um, uh, starting November 22nd. I can't remember the exact dates. We will be advertising the papers. All the stakeholders, including your good selves, will be there where all these issues will be addressed for a permanent solution. Funding of universities, this, that, and the other. So let us uh, tarry a while, hold your horses, let's see, let's see the out outcome of um, our summit, our education summit, in the next, uh, when we start in the next couple of, two to three weeks. Uh, on the issue of um, IPPIS, let's not, uh, let's not um, flog the issue. An agreement has been made, let's not flog the issue. We're here to make sure that argument, uh, that agreement, I, I, I beg your pardon, is not an agreement uh, in theory, but actually in practice. Welcome back to the gavel. Let's head to the Senate now for interactions between committees and the Minister of Finance on the federal government's plans to address inflation, as well as the EFCC chairman who is applauding the move by the CBN to redesign the Naira notes.
chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, is applauding the redesigning of the Naira notes. Speaking to journalists at the National Assembly after a closed-door budget defense session with the Senate Committee on Anti-Corruption, the EFCC chairman questions how the monetary policy can be effective when 85% of the currency in circulation is not being controlled by government. He goes further to say that with regards to the fight against corruption, 2,847 convictions have so far been recorded. It's a good thing that uh, that the country is uh, redesigning its uh, currency now because uh, you can how can you control uh, uh, how can you have an effective monetary policy when you don't have control over 85 percent of your currency is out there and people are holding it people are using that uh, you know to speculate on the foreign exchange and all of that so by by coming up with this uh, uh, policy the government is trying to contain that and ensure that those people that are bringing back all these monies whether legitimately and or illegitimately and we'll be able to monitor and, and, and then the right course of the law will, uh, you know, uh, take its course. As at uh, uh, the 22nd of uh, uh, October this year, we have succeeded in securing 2,847 convictions, you know, and over 70 percent has to do with the issue of cyber crime. The activities of these cyber criminals is uh, tarnishing our image by the day, you know, over, over over, 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 over uh, across the Atlantic, people are trying to see us, you know, uh, as, a, as a cyber crime uh, infested country, which I believe we are not. Uh, it is based on maybe the high number of population that you tend to see that yes, you know, you know, you know, you know, we are doing we are doing one or two things. The know. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed says President Muhammad Buhari has directed the National Food Security Council to come up with recommendations that will address the rise in cost of food prices in the country. According to her, inflation in Nigeria is affected by the Russia-Ukraine war, decisions of central banks in the U.S. and Europe, as well as high cost of petroleum products, especially diesel. She stated this during an interaction with the House of Representatives Committee on Finance. The war in um, uh, Ukraine and Russia has an impact on Nigeria in the sense that some of the inputs uh, for uh, food production are affected. Also, the decisions of uh, central banks in the U.S. and Europe, uh, the decisions that they take on tightening, monetary tightening, has also an impact on their own levels of inflation that also uh, affects our countries because we also import goods from those countries. But in Nigeria, we also have inflation. One of the buckets of inflation is food inflation. So when farmers produce their goods and they have to transport the goods to the market, their goods, the prices, the MBS data shows that uh, food prices at farm gates have actually declined, but the cost of transportation is continuously increasing and impacting the cost of food and unfortunately affecting our people. On the side of the government, uh, the uh, president has authorized the National Food Security Council and we have held a meeting even yesterday evening on how some support will be provided. And one of the means will be releasing stocks from the strategic reserves, but also looking at how to provide some support in terms of inputs in fertilizer production, as well as inputs such as, uh, as feeds. The committee will be meeting again in the next couple of days to provide recommendations to Mr. President that will later on be announced for, for implementation. The Senate Committee on Women Affairs met with the National Center for Women Development and other critical stakeholders on Tuesday on a bill which seeks to amend the National Center for Women Development Act and rename the edifice after the late Mrs. Mariam Babangida. The center, which was established in 1992, was originally named Mariam Babangida Development Center, but was later changed to the current name National Center for Women Development in 1994 during the military regime of late General Sani Yabacha. The center was a brainchild of our mother of the nation, the first, former first lady, late Dr. Mrs. Ibrahim Babangida, Miriam Ibrahim Babangida. The center represents one of our outstanding legacies with her work with, and her work with women, particularly the women of rural Nigeria, whose lives she strove tirelessly to improve. This year marks the 30th anniversary of this legacy of our dear mother, a legacy that she built with sheer willpower she solely sourced the funding for the construction and operation of this center from, from the public and private organizations. The center was established mainly as a resource center for research, 
training mobilization of women towards self-actualization and integration into national development. I would like to make a personal plea. Let us take this opportunity to reaffirm our collective commitment to women and youth development. I would also like to see the center become even more active in capacity building on gender and governance and in supporting the activities of women in leadership positions and responsibilities. The original goals, thank you, the original goals of the center included enhancing women's role in education, culture, and the law, as well as politics, and of course, in cooperative and rural development. So let us use it to recognize and champion these women who are making a difference and setting an example to others. All the critical stakeholders wholly supported the bill. Maria Babengida has done so much for Nigerian women. I'm here in full support because what my DG has presented, it is, we are in agreement with her and it, I have, I'm giving her the full support and I'm congratulating and commending Altia for organizing and calling for this public hearing. I commended the House of Reps for doing the same last week, and today we are having the Senate Committee having this public hearing to rename it was a national, Maria Babengida National Center for Women Development. All we want is that this name should be renamed again because it takes care of all issues concerning women, giving women a voice, giving women this, the, 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 the confidence and to be part of decision-making. That center should and must become the bank for all the data that you need in terms of women issues, women development. And I think we always make this mistake. Women issues are developmental issues. They're not social issues. We're not dealing with women for women's sake. We don't want charities. It's not a charity affair. We don't want the men to think that we are begging. No. It's a developmental issue. Whatever sector you take, the economy, the environment, health, education, everything about development in this country is a woman development issue. Senate I President Ahmed Lawan says the National Assembly is incapacitated in curbing corruption and economic sabotage in the country. Speaking during the convocation ceremony of the National Institute of Democratic Studies in Abuja, Senator Lawan, while citing Section 88 of the 1999 Constitution, says the legislature does not have the power to issue punishment to offenders. Beyond people voting, I think the reality is the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as it is today, 1999 as amended, has left the legislature prostrate. Prostrate because in Section 88, it talks of the legislature exposing corruption, waste, and embezzlement, and it stops. So when you expose something and you can't do anything, how does that solve the problem? It's like seeing a thief, and you say, thief, 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 ole, ole. And you can't act as a police person to arrest this person, nor can you try and prosecute this person. And the person goes. So the legislature is really incapacitated. That's the fact, because you can't do anything. The budget of the National Assembly is the budget to develop democracy in Nigeria. And the people, if citizens feel the current crop of members of the National Assembly are not good enough, 2023 is there. Well, that's it on The Gavel. Thanks for your time. I'm Terry Ikumi. Remember to send feedback to The Gavel at channelstv.com. Goodbye.